No way that this $75 war has better hot sauce over than most PCBs. Yeah. I mean, they've been working on this for a long time. Huge fan of the Viniki. Pra and Anthony have always been very, very nice to me. They're just, they're good cookies. Good cookies for sure. The Tess 65. This is a Diviniki X Moto Key keyboard. Group buy is actually live right now. It's live October 4th to October 25th. There are a handful of colors black, burgundy, navy, purple, silver, creamy white, sage. So seven different colors. For the badge and weight, you can pick alu black, silver, or copper, or you can get brushed stainless steel, black stainless steel mirror PVD, and silver stainless steel mirror PVD. So you have six choices for that. PCBs, you can get wired soldered, wired hot swap, tri-mode hot swap, and then four plate options, ever four alu PCPP. This is the box it comes in. It's a relatively small box. I actually started stream late because I couldn't find it. I was looking for like a big box, but this one came in like a tiny box. So eventually I found it and I was like, oh, this box is not as big as I thought. So, so they sent me the purple. Looks pretty nice. So they sent me a PC plate, an alu plate, Boom. And they sent me the hot swap wired PCB. I got the aluminum silver. Okay, so for this one, you're looking at purple case color, alu silver badge weight, wired hot swap, alu plate. You're looking at $75. Wait, there's no way. $75? Yeah, it, it really is just like that. It's a three month production time, super inexpensive. Let's see what the most expensive configuration we could get. Okay, so this keyboard ranges from $65 to $125. If you get the black or silver stainless steel, but my configuration that I have right here goes for $75, pretty crazy. So basically all the seven case colors are the same pricing. The weight and the badge changes based off of what you get. The alu, black, silver, copper are gonna be the cheapest. Brushed stainless steel, a little bit more expensive, but then the most expensive are gonna be your stainless steel mirrors. In terms of PCB, so wired solder is gonna be the cheapest but then tri-mode hot swap is going to be the more expensive one. Wired hot swap will also be a little bit more pricey, but the tri-mode hot swap is going to be more expensive. For all the plates, they are the same price. So looking at the case, so 65%, you do have the top right-hand corner blocker. You have an arrow blocker right here. Looking at this, you can see it does use the ribbon cable. The side bezels are th gonna be thinner than the top and bottom, but they're still like, I'd say relatively small-ish. Just looking at the top, arrow blocker, top right-hand corner blocker. Here's the side. So you do see the seam. So top case, bottom case. Here's the back. So same motif. As this badge right here, you find this on the back as well. What's this called? Like an isometric type of dealio? Yeah, you do have this tiny weight right here. And this one you can get in different colors if you like, but it does follow this like triangle motif. Also, it's interesting because you notice how this is the shape. The weight is the same as well. So instead of the weight just being like rectangular, you can see it has the same shape as the side, the top and bottom. But yeah, you have the four feet right here, so four adhesive feet. There is no visible case screws. I don't know if you guys noticed that. So centered USB port, and then here is the front lip. But yeah, it looks like all the screws are inside the case, so you don't actually see any like visible screws. So two, four, six, so it looks like six case screws. Two on top, two on bottom, and then one on each side. If you look at the bottom piece, it's really just a flat piece. There's no walls or anything. So it's just kind of this like flat bottom piece. You do see these like holes here. There's no screws in them or anything, but you can see these are for the case screws right here. This daughter board uses two screws. So it's just underneath the ribbon cable right there. This board uses PCB gasket mount 
or top mount. So I'm guessing these are for the gaskets. This is elevated and I'm guessing just to accommodate for the top and bottom case to screw together. And then also looking at the bottom case, you can see that there are these like silicon pegs, but I'm guessing this is their version of like a force break. Top and bottom case in order to avoid like the pingy metal metal contact, they've added these uh, like silicon bumps that's raised. So you can see whenever it goes, the top case goes over, they would then rest on this, which is probably why they also raised this. Looking at the top case, here you can see the batch does use two screws to keep it in. Instead of doing like the one in the middle, they have done the two. Here are the top mounting points. So one, two, three, four on top, and then the one and the two. That's really interesting. You have a top mount screw on the arrow blocker, or I guess right underneath it, but yeah. So you go from four mounting points on the top to two on the bottom. Interesting. I'm guessing these screws right here are going to be for the PCB gasket mount. Also, you know how earlier I said there's the seam and it's the top and bottom? It tricked me. It's not, actually. The top piece just has a seam built into it. Here's the side. So you do see the seam. So top case, bottom case. Tricky, tricky. One thing to note is, yeah, all the screw points for the case are actually elevated. These two, instead of like being below right here, it's actually raised up. Same with the two side pieces, they're raised up. Looks like these cuts right here are actually for the PCB gasket and not for the top mount. So let's look at this plate. Here are your top mounts. So as we said earlier, you have six top mounting points, although it's four on the top and two on the bottom. There is no mounting point on the space bar, but they have put one right by the quote arrow blocker. The plate actually already has the blocker cut off here, so you don't have to worry about mistakenly putting a switch right here. I'm assuming these cutouts on the plate are for the case screw parts. So they've cut these parts out for the case screws. No flex cuts but there are like these cuts, which I don't know if you guys would call them like relief cuts. I think they're more so design cuts so that it doesn't get in the way. There's no contact with the case screws. I imagine it may affect the plate, but not too much. Looking at the PC plate, looks like it's the same ordeal. This cut right here, I'm guessing this is for the tri-mode wireless switch they've made this cutout for that. But same deal, nothing has really changed from like the harder plate to the softer plate. Tabs are the same and then the cutouts for the case screws are also the same. Step a regular cap slot, you can split the left shift. Looks like it has ISO support. You can split the back space. Bottom row, you can pick which bottom row you'd like. These are the PCB gasket mounting points. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Three on the top, three in the bottom. And then here, once again, you can see the grooves for the case. Looks like no per key, no RGB in general, no physical reset button. And then right here, you can see this is where the ribbon cable would go in. So it looks like for the PCB gaskets, it's like these dumbbell gasket looking things. So you can see right here, this is like one of the gaskets it has like the nipple right here. This basically tells you like which one is the top or bottom. Like there is like a difference between it. This is the top, this flat piece, and this nipple piece is the bottom because you can see where it aligns. So just looking at the shape of the gasket points, it's a lot smaller. And so it'd go in like this. And then you have your normal foam kit. So you have case, plate, and PE foam. Vinny Key is one of the first vendors that actually like was willing to take a chance on me. <laughs> Basically, I reached out to them. Was like, I love your, I love your uh, company. Please consider. Please, can I be an affiliate? And they were like, Yeah, sure. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> so thank you, Carl, Anthony, and Henry for giving me that chance. <laughs>
All right. But yeah, let's talk about the bird. This is the Test 65. This is being ran by Divinity, and it's actually a group by right now. One of the main selling points for this board is for this case configuration that I have, it is $75. Yep, you've heard me right, $75. Excluding switches and keycaps, but this board for the case and PCB, the starting price for it is $65 and it goes up to $125 really really good pricing and honestly this is a solid keyboard i'm not sure what exactly they were able to do to get the pricing so low but it is a solid board they don't have different badges yet but divinity key was mentioning something about later on doing like community badges but currently this is the default badge i would say the only thing about this that is probably annoying for most is the ribbon cable i personally don't like ribbon cable I don't know anyone who does. Just as long as you know it's a ribbon cable, they've actually given you a weight inside. There's like a cavity for batteries, but instead of making that like completely empty, they've put a weight inside and it has the branding and it says 200 Gs, but when we weighed it, it was missing some weight. Uh-oh. <laughs> <sighs> Once you take this out, you could put the battery in it, but in case you don't want to do the batteries, they have put this so that there's not just like a hollow gap and it gives the board like some heft. Also, they don't say, but because it uses PCB gasket, I did build this platelist. I'll ask to confirm that that's like intended. When you buy the actual kit, you don't have a choice to do platelists. Like you have to get a plate with it. And that's the only reason I'm like, hmm. The Anno is nice, very consistent. The top and bottom match as well, very smooth. I will say the only thing I did notice is that the printing on the weight is a little inconsistent. So it's like a lot darker right here, but you can see right here it fades a little bit, but then here it's dark again. And I would have assumed that was like intentional, except for these parts are very dark. That's like me nitpicking, That that is a nitpick. It's not a big of a deal, but yeah, that's the board. If you guys are interested, it's in group buy right now. If you decide to buy the board, please consider using my affiliate link. I do have one with Divinity. Pretty solid board. I honestly don't know how they did it. I'd have to ask them, but I don't know if they would disclose it, but yeah, solid board. I would recommend this, especially if you like 65%. If you're trying to get someone like into the hobby, starting with this, very good. I'm excited to see like how Divinity like moves from this. So this is huge for them, I think. Thank you Divinity for sending this out to me. Also, if you guys are interested in this keycap set, this is IDK Koala. It has really cute novelties. Look, look how cute. Thank you Bolsa for sending this keycap set out to me. Hope you guys enjoyed this build.